Today we are going to be creating a sci-fi mother box inside of Maya and we are going to be using mash. So let's get into it. So the first thing we are going to do is take a simple cube and let's scale this up. Now you can take any primitive that you want but I'm going to start off by taking a simple cube. So let's get started. Now I'm also going to be changing the subdivision amount to somewhere like 10. Perfect. Just so we have nice subdivision to start with. Now I'm going to take another cube and this will be the other cube that will be cloned onto this cube. So let's turn off the grid for now and I'm going to scale this way way down until you can barely see this cube. Okay, looks good. Now I'm going to create a mesh network out of this. But before that, let's go to the outliner. And let's change the name of this cube to mother box. Let's call this a simple cube just so we have a nice workflow going on. Now I'm going to select my cube, go to the mesh and simply click on mesh. Now once you have clicked on mesh, you will see a couple of clones of your object and that is because mesh create a distribute node by default. So let's change that to mesh. Now what we are doing here is we are telling the mesh network that instead of cloning this in a linear or radial way, I want you to clone it on a mesh. So here I'm going to go to my outliner and simply drag and drop it onto the input mesh. Now you can simply click on your middle mouse button and click on this and drop it on your input mesh. Now instantly as you do that you'll notice that uh, it has cloned those small cubes on top of the bigger cube. So what we can do from here is increase the number of points. Now we have a couple of problems here. The first problem is obviously we don't have enough cubes to fill this uh, bigger cube. So we can either increase the number of points but that will still won't solve the problem. And the second thing is changing the metal from scatter to face center. Now what we are doing here is basically telling the mesh network to clone every single cube on top of the face center of the main cube. So you'll notice if I go back to my poly cube and increase the subdivisions, you'll notice that more cubes are being cloned onto depending on the face center. So I can go here and change this to somewhere like 50, 50 and 50. I have nice subdivision going on but there's another problem the, and the problem is we are running out of cubes. Now to solve this what we can do is select the cube, go to attribute, mesh distribute and here you'll see an option called as flood mesh and that will just fill on the whole cube. As you can see we have small gaps going around on our cubes and that is easy to fix. Simply click on your mother box and go to the poly cube and increase the number of subdivisions you have. And that's it. We do have small gaps. So I guess we have to increase the subdivisions even more. Okay, so now it looks perfect. So let's uh, get into this. Now let's try randomizing this stuff and make it look like more sci-fi to select uh, your mesh network going to the attributes. And here we are going to create another node and that is the offset node. So let's add the offset node and here as you can see we have a couple of values we can change the translation right we can uh, translate our rotation and something like this and you won't see much just lower the value and now as you can see we have a couple of things going on here so uh, let's change it back to 0 0 0 let me just change this back to 0.9 first and now what we are doing is simply changing the scale amount of the smaller cubes so we can reveal our main cube so as you can see we have tiny small cubes going on which we can barely see and what we can do from here is go to the fall off object and create a fall off now to create a fall off you can simply right click on this box and click on create now you'll see a uh, invisible kind of line sphere going on and this is your fall off and what this will do is simply control the overall you can say animation on this or you can see the effect of the fall off now everything that you see inside of your offset for example if i change it to something like 40 60 and 20. now everything that is inside of these region will only be affected by these values now i'm going to go back inside of my offset and i'm going to keep it like this for now now here you will see a couple of things. The first thing is you can invert the follow if you want and the shape is set to sphere. You can also change it to cube if you want. Uh, but we don't want that. What we want is two things. The first is inner zone. 
And if you'll notice, you have two spheres. The first is inner zone and the second is outer zone. Now, the inner zone is mostly affected part and the outer zone is least affected part. So what we can do is we can change this to 0.4 and we can scale this even down now. And from here, what we can do is if we scale this down to somewhere like this, you'll see uh, these are the cubes that are being affected by the fall off. So what you can do here is change the fall off ramp from linear to smooth and select the other one as well and changing it to smooth. Now the effect still doesn't look that good. So let's make it interesting by simply changing the fall off something like this. And this to understand the fall off, uh, what you have to do is think of it as a zero to one value. Now everything that is below or you can say going on the downside is the zero value and the upside is the one value. So it's going from zero to one back to zero. So what we can do here is change this and make it something like this. So now we have something interesting going on. Now if you'll notice, if I scale this up, you have pretty cool looking sci-fi thing going on. Now let's try to make this even more interesting by shading this. So let's close this. Now definitely play around with different types of ramps and come up with your own kind of look. And uh, let's move on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is simply select the mesh first and let's create a new material. And I'm going to create a standard surface. Let's call this cube. I'm going to choose a preset called as gold. Perfect. So now we have interesting material going on. And now what we are going to do is shade the main cube. So I'm going to change this cube to a glassy cube. So I'm going to select another stand surface, change the preset to something glass. You can also choose diamond if you want. I'm going to call this mother box. Now let's make sure the transmission is set to one and uh, the opaque is turned off. Now make sure if you're creating anything related to the glass, make sure your OPIC is turned off. Otherwise light won't pass through your object. So now I think uh, this is perfect. Now let's turn on our IPR and you'll probably won't see much. And that is because we don't have any light in our scene. So let's take a skydome light for now. Yeah. So we have interesting cube looking going on. I'm going to go back to my main camera and I'm going to set a view here. Let's turn on the film gates so we can see. And okay, so I'm going to lock the camera here. And from here, I'm going to go to my IPR. And let's turn this on. Now let's change the camera. Perfect. So I'm going to delete the Skydome light. And instead of using a skydome light, I'm going to use another source of light and that will be a sphere. So let's take a sphere and we already have a sphere right exactly where we want it. So let's uh, create a mesh light out of it. So let's go to Arnold and create a mesh light. Let's hit render. And as you can see, we see something going on. So let's increase the number of exposure we have. Let's make it two. Let's make it four. So now we can see something not much, but yes, definitely something. I'm going to make sure uh, the light visible is turned on and let's change the sample to four. Now, one thing we have to change is definitely adding a little bit of atmosphere to give this kind of a sci-fi look. So let's go to the render settings, Arnold render, environment, atmosphere, and create an atmosphere volume. Now from here, let's change the density value to one. Let's turn this on. Okay, so we have some fog going on and I'm going to change the anastrophe to 0.7. Let's change this to samples to 12. You can increase it when the final render is closed and uh, maybe increase the number of density as well. Because I think it's looking good. Now I'm going back to my sphere and let's take that light. Let's change, uh, instead of using a simple color, you can also change your color if you want of the light. Instead of this, let's simply change it to use color temperature. Now this way, what we can do is we can use color temperature for this. I think uh, this is looking quite nice now. Okay, so I think it looks pretty good. Now I can uh, definitely try between between the light visible and not visible, which is giving us more better look. 
and I'm probably going to change uh, the material of the cube from a simple glass to maybe a diamond. So let's select diamond. And now we have some, you can say refraction. Going on. I think I don't like the dispersion going on around it. So I'm going to turn the dispersion off. Okay. Now it looks good. So from here, what we can do is we can add an additional lights to the scene. So let's take an area light and I'm going to go to my perspective camera. Let's bring it out here, scale this up and uh, let's rotate it to somewhere like this. Yeah, and let's render this again. Let's change the exposure to four. Okay, so we have something going on. It looks pretty interesting, uh, but we have to change a certain number of things. The first is definitely using the color temperature to match the scene. And I'm going to decrease the amount of volume I have on this and maybe more intensity or exposure on this to make our object more visible. We can also use an HDR to kind of light the scene. I'm also going to be using a directional light for this. So let's take a directional light. Bring this out. Let's see. All right, it looks good. I'm going to go to the Arnold and let's use the color temperature. And let's set it to over here. Perfect. At the end, what you can do is if you want to fill the whole scene, you can simply take a sky dome light, which will kind of ruin the whole effect. But to fix this, you can simply turn off the camera first. And from here, you can turn down the intensity to somewhere like 0.2. Or maybe 0.1. All right, so this will just fill the scene, but I don't think it's looking that good on our scene. So I'm going to probably get rid of this. Uh, and probably use an HDR map for this. Now you can uh, always go back to your sphere and maybe change the light visible. So I think it's looking good. I can maybe increase the number of exposure I have on this. So now it looks pretty bright and pretty cool looking. Now I'm also going to be trying this same look with a different HDRI. So let's delete all the light we have in our scene. All right, so pretty blank. Let's go to the Arnold Sky Dome and I'm going to load my HDR here. Okay, so after trying out different HDRs, I'm pretty happy with this result. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, changing your materials specularness from white to something like a bit orangish to match the overall scene. And let's do the same with the other shear as well. All right, perfect. So now, as you can see, we have a pretty cool sci-fi mother box look going on. Now you can try different setting with this, uh, playing around with different types of ideas. Now I'm just going to reduce the amount of density I have on this, just so we can see a little better. And the other thing that you can do is playing around with the fall off effect. Now, if I go to this main. Let me just change this to not shade and let me just pause the IPR and go back to this. And here you can play around with the fall off to get a different type of result to see what you can come up with. And here you can kind of create a shock wave kind of look as well. And the other thing that you can do is definitely playing around with the offset values. And here you can change the rotations. And uh, let me just select this to somewhere like 40 and this is just offset values what we have to change is the mash offset and maybe making it 180 or 90 and 120 this will just kind of give you an enhanced kind of sci-fi look so the more number of points you have on this the more uh, interesting look you are going to get so play around with this have fun using it and if you create an interesting render out of this, definitely send me on Instagram. I love to see all your work. Again, thank you for watching. Enjoy.